So I'd like, and this is a permanency review before a final order. Uh, so I'd like to ask everyone to, who's here to please state their name. If you're if you've muted, unmute yourself, state your name, and then and then mute yourself again. We'll we'll start with Mr. McKeska. Thank you, Judge uh, Drake McKeska, attorney for the department. Ms. Nix. Shelley Nix, belong permanency specialist. Lindsay Ligon, belong supervisor. Deborah Fuller, attorney for the mother, Aly Alyssa Sheets, also known as Nicole Gonzalez. Could you unmute um, and announce? Can you unmute her, Shara, since you muted her or no? <laughs> no, I have to ask her to unmute. So Okay. Sadly, I can't unmute her. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sometimes it's the space bar. If they hold the space bar down, they can unmute themselves. But Richard Saldivar, attorney for the child. Thank you. <laughs> Amy Harding, Hill Country Council Supervisor, Guardian Ad Litem for the child. Okay. Looks like Charles Weatherby, attorney for the uh, alleged father who's in custody uh, with TDC. Uh, not ready, but not opposed. All right. Alyssa, can you announce now? Yeah, Melissa Sheets. All right, thank you. And if you put it back on mute, or, or Mrs. Greenlee will put you back on mute. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, as I said, we're here today for a permanency hearing before a final. All right, so I'm going to turn it over to you, Mr. McKeska, to ask questions of Ms. Nix. Uh, thank you, Judge. Permanency specialist. Okay, are you the permanency specialist as assigned to this case? Yes, I am. Okay, um, where is Cassius currently placed? He's in uh, a foster home in Bernie. Okay, and how is Cassius doing in that placement? He's doing exceptionally well in that placement. Okay, how long has he been placed there? Uh, I don't have the court report in front of me, and I've just got the case in December, uh, but several months. I'm sorry, I don't have the exact time frame. Okay. Um, is Cassius up to date on all of his medical and dental needs? Yes, he is. Okay. Are there any medical or dental concerns at this time? No, they're not. Okay. Um, is the current foster home meeting all of, I think I already asked this, meeting all of his needs? Yes, they are. Okay. Do you have um, any concerns for his placement? None at all. Uh, do you believe the continuation in his current placement is in his best interest? Yes, it is. And are you asking the court to continue his placement today? Yes, I am. Okay. Uh, what is the current permanency goal for Cassius? It is unrelated adoption by the current uh, foster home placement. Okay. Have they expressed a desire to adopt Cassius if um, he becomes eligible for adoption? Yes, they have. Okay. Um, can you give the court an update on um, how Miss Gonzalez is doing in her family plan of service? Um, I heard Miss Fuller state that she was in Bayer County Jail. I thought that she was in Plain State Jail. Um, to my knowledge, she was incarcerated there in January. We got her a local permanency specialist based on the last contact by that worker. Uh, with Ms. Gonzalez, uh, she's participating in a parenting class and she's working on towards her GED, uh, which um, I was very happy to hear that. I'm very proud of her for that. Uh, she started this uh, incarceration, as I stated previously, in January. Uh, it was a five-year plea agreement. Um, she's hopeful that the time will be reduced and she'll be released sooner. Um, are there any services that she's not able to complete while she's in, uh, incarcerated? I don't believe she's able to, uh, address the substance abuse issues, which were a concern in this case. So she would need to do that upon her release. She won't have access to individual counseling either. Okay. Uh, how would you classify her current level of compliance? Well, she's in cooperation as much as she can be, given her current circumstances. I do believe that she'll take advantage of everything that the facility has to offer, but her ability to participate in her required services is quite limited. Okay. Uh, with regard to uh, Mr. Doogie, can you give the court an update on how he's doing? Um, I also heard Mr. Uh, Weatherby state that he believed that he's incarcerated. When the case was transferred to me in December, it was my understanding that he had uh, been released from TDJC uh, and that he was living in Bernie with his mother. Since becoming the caseworker, I've made multiple attempts to reach him. 
uh, at the current address that I have for him, leaving my business card with his mother and with the young lady who identified herself as his sister, but he has not reached out to me. Okay. Uh, when's the last time you attempted to make contact with Mr. Doogie? That would have been February the 15th was my last attempt. Okay. Um, and Mr. Doogie has been adjudicated as Cassius's father in this case. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Um, what services does Mr. Doogie need to engage in? He needs to participate in random drug testing, um, engage in a substance abuse assessment and recommended services, um, parenting, and individual counseling. Okay. And how would you classify his overall level of compliance at this time? He is not in compliance. Okay. Um, with Ms. Gonzalez being incarcerated, are there any sort of parent-child visits occurring at this time? No, there are not. Okay. Is there any way to be able to facilitate visits at this time? Um, I'm sorry. I'm unable to confirm whether the facility will facilitate visits. I've not had the opportunity to reach out to them. I don't know if Ms. Gonzalez has talked to them about that, but I will reach out to the facility and confirm if visitation is available. But they are about five hours away from Bernie. Okay. And then with regard to uh, Mr. Doogie, is he having any sort of parent-child visits at this time? No, he's not. Okay. Pass the witness, Judge. Uh, Ms. Fuller? Um, Ms. Nix, um, just for your information, Ms. Uh, Gonzalez is just temporarily in Bear County. While she's okay. there, are you able to set up a psychological evaluation? Um, yes, I can surely try to do that. Um, do you know how long she's, sorry, I'm not supposed to ask questions, but do you know how long she's going <laughs> you know to be there? How long do I have? Uh, probably a couple weeks. <laughs> I'll do my best. Sorry, I mean, if I you can, if you can, yeah. I, you know, she was just brought over. Okay. I apologize, Your Honor. I went off track. <laughs> That's okay. Where, was she, where is she brought over from? I'm a little bit confused. The Plain Jail, the Plain State Jail, um, the facility okay. that Miss Nix had previously mentioned. That's where she's serving her time. Okay. In, in Dayton, Dayton, Texas. And so why was she moved temporarily to, to Bear County? Uh, to deal with some issues in Bear County. Okay. Okay. I, I don't mean to d delve into that, but I was just uh, kind of confused. So, okay. Go ahead and uh, continue your questioning, Ms. Fuller. Ms. Nix, did you have an opportunity to look her up on the website for plain jail? Initially, yes, that I confirmed that she was there. I don't recall any other information provided there. But... Um, you weren't able to see that it indicated her earliest, uh, possibility to be released is April of this year? I can't specifically say that I saw that at the time I looked her up. Okay. Um, and Mr. McKessa asked you about visitation. Since she is in Bear County now, would that be a possibility to set up a visit? I'm, you know, I don't know if everybody agrees with it, but um, if the parties are in agreement and I can facilitate that with the jail while she's in Bear County, I can attempt to do that. Okay. And uh, in regards to the substance abuse issue, uh, she's been incarcerated uh, probably for over six months, correct? Yes. Part so in, rega in regards to getting an inpatient or any of those services, she's been clean for over six months, so she would not qualify, correct? Correct. Okay. So besides she's doing the parenting, getting her GED, um, is there anything else that she can be doing or has to do? Um, since she wouldn't be able to do individual counseling in jail, I think that she should continue to do the parenting and most definitely get her GED. And as you stated, um, Cash is doing extremely well in the placement. Oh, yes. He's a happy little baby. He uh, got over a rough bout with teething mid-February, and he seems to be doing quite well. And, and the foster parents are very uh, uh, amenable to sharing photos with, with my client and keeping her updated on his, on his health. Yes, they are. Okay. I'll pass the witness. Uh, Mr. Weatherby? <clears throat> uh, no questions, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Saldivar? 
Uh, yes, do we have potential release dates for either parent at this point? I thought that Mr. Doogie was already out uh, before I got the case, like September, October. Um, based on Ms. Fuller's testimony, it seems like that Miss um, Gonzalez could be paroled as soon as April on her five-year sentence. Okay. <clears throat> and do you know when the last time uh, Ms. Sheets has, has seen the child? Uh, based on the previous caseworkers documentation, one visit prior to September when she was incarcerated, and that one didn't go well. Okay. And we have uh, no concerns for the current placement. Is that correct? None at all. Okay. And his needs are being met uh, with no concerns, correct? Yes, they are. Does, does Cassius need any orders from the court here today? No. Okay. Pass the witness, Judge. Thank you. All right. So <clears throat> I'll get back to the, the parents' request, but I, I would like to hear a report from uh, Mr. Gonzalez. I mean, I'm sorry, Mr. Saldivar and uh, from CASA. So, Mr. Saldivar, what are your thoughts about how things are going with this child? <clears throat> well, he, he's he's doing very well with placement. We get regular updates from placement, so I have no concerns for him. He's uh, meeting all his milestones. He's thriving in placement, so I'd ask that placement to continue. As far as the request for a visit at, jail, at the jail, Judge, I'm opposed at this time. I don't, I don't think they're in his best interest. Um, at this time to take the, ch the child to the jail for a visitation. All right, thank you. Casa, and I see Ms. Weber is there now. Um, uh, d d does Ms. Ms. Weber, are you the one that would like to make the report or Ms. Harding? Ms. Weber? Um, I just agree with everything that has been said. He's doing extremely well with his placement. Uh, he is meeting all his milestones. I've seen him at daycare too. They also uh, just think he's thriving and doing a great job. He's crawling now, he's teething, he's happy, uh, and we don't think he should be moved at this time. We agree with the placement. How do you feel about the possible visitation with the mother in jail? Mr. Saldivar indicated he's opposed as the ad litem for the child. So honestly, this is the first time I've heard of that. So I, I probably would not want to do that either but I haven't really had time to think about that or talk to anybody about that. Okay. Well, what I'll say on the visits, I'm not going to order a visit right now. Uh, and I, cause we don't know for sure how long she's even going to be in Bear County. I would ask that Ms. Nix look into that and see whether it's a possibility and then make contact again with all the parties to see uh, if, if they're in agreement or opposed, it, depending on what the situation is, it might be that, the attorney at Latum and the CASA guardian at Latum might end up agreeing. But so I'd say we don't really have any specifics right now is my point. So, all right. Do you have anything? Judge, I just want to go ahead, Mr. Judge, if I just may address the court, I'm, I'm not opposed to mom receiving pictures and updates of the child while she's in, incarcerated. Okay. And, you know, the thing about it is, um, uh, is that if she gets released, then obviously uh, visits would need to be set up. So I think that it's important for Ms. Nix to try to follow up to and see realistically when she might be getting released. Ms. Fuller, do you have anything to add on behalf of your client? Yes, I, I, she is taking advantage of all the services in, in the in the Plains uh, prison system. All, they only offer the uh, parenting and the GED, but that's very important for her to do. Um, I, I appreciate the foster parents. They've shared a lot of photos, which I've shared with her, and, and, and she's had an opportunity to see him grow and thrive in their home. Um, I don't know what the facilities are like in Bear County. She was just recently moved back here. Um, so, I mean, if it's a possibility, I would like her to have the opportunity to, to see her son before she's sent back to the main um, facility. I can only tell you that I on the website, it said earliest possibility of parole is April of 2024. I don't do criminal law. I don't know if that would even be a possibility, but that's what it says on the website. And so she's going to take a, a advantage of everything that's offered to her. And hopefully if they can get the psychological set up too, while she's there, uh, while she's in bear, 
um, th that might be helpful as well. Right. I agree. Um, all right. Thank you, Ms. Fuller. Mr. Weatherby, do you have anything on behalf of your client? Uh, yes, Your Honor. I misspoke a little earlier. I remember he was incarcerated and paroled out. He was supposed to move in with his mother, but he is not with her and she doesn't know where he is and I I, I can't find him. Okay. So he may be back in custody if he's not in contact with his parole officer. Right. Okay. And I, I think I heard somebody call him alleged and then um, then I heard somebody say that he had been adjudicated. Um, can somebody clarify that? Is there Mr. McKeska? Yes, he was Judge. adjudicated. He, he was adjudicated in the order of sign on September 29th, 2023. Okay, good. Uh, that was a question that I had about if, whether a paternity had been established. So, um, all right. I am going to at this time find that the mother is in partial compliance. I almost hate to say that because it's not like the child could be returned to her at this time. But I want you to understand, Ms. Sheets, that I think everybody is really impressed with the fact that you've taken advantage of everything that you can. And that's exactly what you need to be doing. You're stuck, you know, right now uh, being incarcerated. And so if you can get some things accomplished, like your GED and parenting classes, that's that's going to be a huge benefit to you. And so I'm, I'm proud of you for doing that. What I will say, though, is I, even though she wouldn't be able to probably get into inpatient treatment upon a release. I still think she needs to get into drug treatment. When It's different when you can't access drugs and when you can and, and you don't. So I think that it's important to go to some sort of outpatient. I don't know if that would be even, you know, AANA type uh, program or something. I, I think that maybe when she gets out, she needs to take a, a drug assessment and see what's what the recommendations are that might be the place to start because then they might say there's no need for it but i always think anybody can benefit from aa or na classes and i also think individual counseling needs to be started as soon as that she's released um i am going to go ahead and order this case to mediation it seems like the next hearing we have is a trial on may 8th at 9 30 so, um, you know, the status of both parents is a little bit up in the air right now, although the father seems to have basically done nothing. So uh, I will find that he is not in compliance with the plan of service and has not made any contact with um, the caseworker. I will continue the child in his current placement, find that that placement is meeting his needs and that he's safe in that placement and that... Um, it's in his best interest to continue that placement and that there's no parent that he can be safely returned to at this time. Um, I need you to uh, to advise you, Ms. Sheets, that your rights are still subject to being restricted or even terminated. Do you understand that? Okay. Um, like I said, though, I think that it's impressive that you're working really hard given your situation. And, and obviously, you've got to take care of your criminal cases that's it's got to be a priority for you um as far as the visits like i said i'm not going to order that any visits take place in jail but i would like for uh, miss nix to explore that possibility and see and as well as the possibility of whether she could get a psychological evaluation that would be helpful just because those normally take only a day or sometimes two so uh, you could get that out of the way um Let's see. Are there any other issues that I failed to address or that we need to discuss? No, Judge, I'll give you it all. Okay. All right. Any questions directly from you, Ms. Sheets? Okay. I, I know you're you've got a good lawyer there that's gonna uh, keep you uh, informed on what's going on. And and it seems like you're doing a good job of staying in contact with your caseworker and um, hopefully your CASA and ad litem as well. So um, that's that's your best bet to to know what's going on is to keep in touch with those those folks. So 
All right. If there's nothing further, then as I said, our next hearing is May 8th at 930. And um, if there's nothing further, then all parties may be excused. Thank you. Out of Kendall Thank County, you, Texas, Judge. being heard Thank today, you, March 13th via Zoom. I'm visiting Judge Morris, hearing uh, covering these hearings today for Judge Falkenberg. This is a permanency review after a final order. Um, does anyone know if is the child herself, who's not a child anymore, are we expecting that she might appear? No, Your Honor, not today. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and have announcements and find out who's here, starting with Mr. McKeska. Thank you, Judge. Drake McKeska, attorney for the department. Ms. Nix. Sally Nix, Belong Permanency Specialist. Lindsay Ligon, Belong oh. Permanency Supervisor. Jennifer Harris, attorney ad litem for the youth. I see some other belong people, but they may be just observing. So uh, unless you intend to t testify, you don't really need to identify yourself. Um, where is Samantha currently placed? She is in an SIL, a supervised independent living program in the Houston area. Uh, the name of the program is uh, Mathern. Okay. You said in the Houston area? Yes. The name okay. of the program is what? Mathern, M-A-T-H-E-R-N. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, and can you give uh, just the, the court an update? I'm at, I'm at my office. Our internet's not the most stable. <laughs> okay, all right, go ahead. Yeah, I think you said, ex uh, ask her to explain the type of placement that she's in. Well, yeah, can you, or Miss Nix, can you, uh, just give the court an update on um, how Samantha's done since our last hearing. Uh, yes, Your Honor, uh, or yes, Drake. I uh, moved her to a new SIL in January, January the 26th. Uh, prior to that, she was in an SIL program in uh, San Antonio, and there were some placement concerns, so she was moved to a second SIL in um, San Antonio. Then we had additional concerns that arose in January, so she was moved to Mathern. Uh, she's been in a, in the extended care for about nine months now. She has uh, struggled with the transition to try to, to be uh, living independently. She's had trouble getting uh, into eligibility uh, compliance. She was briefly enrolled in cosmetology school, but then stopped uh, she has been struggling to find a job. The director reported over the weekend that uh, they have secured her a job with um, Six Flags working in their lost and found department. She hasn't provided an additional update to say, you know, if she started or when she started. Uh, the only other major thing that's gone on with her over the last, uh, since going to Mathern, was on um, February the 18th. She had a little mental health crisis at the home and ended up being hospitalized for about 10 days. When she was discharged, she was able to return to uh, her current SIL. Uh, she did come back out of that hospital with two new, very concerning mental health diagnoses, including that she could be on the autism spectrum and that she may have um, DID, uh, which is disassociative identity disorder, formerly referred to as multiple personality disorder. Um, she, for the almost entire duration of her nine months in independent living, had failed to stay on her psychotropic medication. She is her own medical consenter, and she chose not to take those medications any longer. Since her discharge from the hospital, she has uh, re-engaged in therapy, and she is under the care of a psychiatrist with King Haven, and she is being prescribed medications, and she is uh, taking those prescribed medications. And I'm so pleased to report that I, she has stabilized, and I do believe that that uh, her director reporting her having a job now uh, is an indication of how much she has come along since just since her discharge from the hospital. Uh, just for the court's edification, and I've shared this with Ms. Harris, Belong has really wrapped around her. I think that it's been a real shining moment in the SSCC process that uh, of what we can do when we 
need to do things. And we've already had two internal meetings with upper management and a lot of specialists, including Dr. Coverstone with, with uh, Stonebridge. She was uh, you know, a chief executive with Belong who previously assessed Samantha and gave his input on her current mental health situation. We provided extra support to Mathern to uh, supervise her more closely and ensure that she was taking her medications and was stable. And uh, as of the last meeting last week, they were able to uh, roll back on that some, and they're not having to provide quite as much supervision of her. And it's more uh, under Mathern's uh supervision now and not so much other support staff. So uh, we're having another internal meeting this afternoon. We're going to, we've invited Ms. Prince. Uh, she was uh, Samantha's CASA all through her case. And she has decided to stay on as just a mentor and a friend. And she's been closely involved with Samantha as well. So we're hoping to have even uh, more positive information about Samantha's progress when we do the internal staffing this afternoon. But I do believe, and I'm so proud to say that I think we've done everything possible to try to help Samantha remain in care so that she does not end up a statistic of foster care. All right. Thank you, Ms. Nix. Did, did you have other questions for her, Mr. Just, just, just one more, Judge. Okay, uh, good, good. Nix, is, is there any specific order you need from the court today in order to be able to meet Samantha's needs? No. Okay. Pass the witness, Judge. Ms. Harris, any questions for Ms. Nix? No, Judge. Uh, would you like to just give a report in about how you think she's doing? I have not been able to talk to her personally since she's been out of the hospital, but I know that Ms. Nix has been keeping me appraised of everything that's going on and has really, really devoted herself to, to making Samantha as successful as possible so i she's in good hands i'm not worried that's great to hear you know i think that um all of us know that you know when these foster kids turn 18 it's almost the first thing they want to do is leave care and it's um i think it's more common than not that they do and so um i think that it's it, it requires a lot of work and supervision and follow-up to to keep them in care. And so uh, I I agree with Ms. what Ms. Harris said. I commend you all for being able to do that. I know that I read the notes from the last hearing that uh, that if she does leave care, it'll just it'll be an ex, you know an extended jurisdiction case or whatever you call it. You know? <laughs> um, but so you know I, that is really good that she's staying in care and, and still getting services, which she obviously really does need. So um, that's very encouraging. Are there any other orders that anyone else knows of that, I mean, almost like orders are just getting away because y'all are going to have to make decisions, decisions day to day and based on what's happening with her. And so, um, you know, I don't want to and interfere in that in any way, but is, is there anything else that you all think that we need to do at this point? Not sure I believe no. been able to to do it um, with their internal systems. So, okay, that sounds great. All right, so then at this time the court will continue. Uh, Samantha and her current placement will find that that placement is definitely in her best interest um, to continue and that she is uh, safe in that placement and receiving appropriate services. Um, she's obviously is over uh, 18 years old now, so it's a um, really she's a young adult that's being monitored through Belong and through her uh, attorney at Lightham, and I'm glad to know that the CASA volunteer is still keeping up with her. We will schedule this for another hearing on August 14th at 9.30, and um, hopefully y'all can just keep shoring her up until that time. I know it's sometimes it's, you know, step by step, day by day, but um, everybody keep up the good work, and I'm sure Ms. Harris will be talking to her. It's a, it's a shame she's 
farther away because I know that must make it harder, but it seems like it's also a good place. So that's that's the most important thing if they're able to meet her needs there. And it sounds like the the places in San Antonio really weren't able to meet her needs that successfully as or as successfully. So all right, is there anything else we need to address? I will. I will go ahead and make the reasonable effort finding that the, that reasonable efforts have been made to to uh, facilitate the permanency plan in this case. I'm sorry, I interrupted you, Mr. McKeska. Anything else from you? No, Judge. Ms. Harris, anything else? No, Your Honor. All right. We all keep up the good work, and uh, really appreciate your efforts. Uh, I know it takes a lot. So if there's nothing further, then you all may be excused. Thank you, Judge. Thank you, Thank Judge. You. It was nice seeing you again, Judge Morris. You too. Have a good day. You too.